LCD screen mounted in the center board is the primary instruction base for the user interface. There are also four push buttons mounted on the side of the board that allow the user to interact with the game based off the four colors. One user interaction is with the dice roll where the user will press a button and then that will interact in software with the stepper motors controlling the XY plotter to move the correct player to the correct position. After the player moves, they either draw a jungle or river danger card based on their position. Each of these cards has a color sequence that the user will then decode with using the push buttons. This then controlled through software, the card comes up with the obstacle that they are supposed to overcome, giving the user three chances to roll the danger dice. When they roll the danger dice, they have to get the correct tool in order to overcome the obstacle and win. If they win, they get a space reward that is indicated in the interface. Now we will take a moment to look at the other danger cards the user can overcome. When the player reaches the final game space, they have one Jumanji. Now we will take a look under the hood to see how this bad boy moves the pieces all around the board. To make wire management simpler, all four push buttons are connected to our interface board, which routes all input back through a single ethernet cable back to the main board. On game startup, the board automatically resets itself. It stops both axes when they hit the limit switches. Now it is calibrated at the 0x and 0y positions. The electromagnet is mounted on both sets of rails so that it can move to any position under the board to maneuver a piece. Two stepper motors drive belts attached to pulleys to move the sled across each track. Watch as the software drives the magnet to position itself under piece one. Once the magnet has positioned itself, it turns on to lock the piece and then begins moving it. Now we will look at the main board and Altera Cyclone. So first we have the um, power connection. So here's the power board with a power connection here as well as another power connection um, and the on button. Next we have the ethernet cables, so this one connects it to the internet, and then we have these two ethernet cables that connect to the stepper motors and the buttons. Um, next we also have connections over here to the switches, as well as um, here to the stepper motors, and these connections here to the power of the LCD screen. Um, this is also the VGA cable that connects through an adapter and an HDMI cord in here to the LCD screen where it gets its image input. This is also the um, connection that allows us to control the board through the um, serial terminal as well as the SD card which holds the file system and other um, game files. The game is made possible through printed circuit board modules, hardware description language modules, and software modules. The printed circuit board modules includes the main interface board, power board, two daughter boards, which in turn controls the LEDs, motors, and push buttons. The HDL sets up the register set through the Avalon interface on the Altera Cyclone board. In software, the kernel module interfaces with the register set, which utilizes device drivers to control mechanical components and control the whole gameplay. Some of the fabricated components include 
3D printed timing belt assembly and the game pieces, customized des design and laser cut Jumanji top board, and also the game images displayed on the LCD screen. Some of the technical challenges we encountered includes integrating open source graphics library to display Im in-game images, and also coordinating the HDL module with the software written in C. We'd also like to thank Plexus for their support and sponsorship of this project.